about 100 publications. Um, I've, been, I've published two books. The first one is Deep Down My Heart, The History of Cardiothoracic Surgery in Ghana. The second one is Taming a Monster, Managing Kolebu Teaching Hospital. These are the books, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman, if uh, I may join you in congratulating Professor Kobna Frimpong Boateng. If you can just share from your two worlds, from the world of medicine to the world of politics, what has been your experience from medicine to politics? We are interested in that aspect of your public uh, life beyond playing with the heart and working on the heart. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for uh, I thank the Honorable Minister for the question. Um, the heart and politics. Well, I went into politics for a very simple reason. Addressing the issues that are bearing on our survival as a nation. And I mean technology. No country ever made it without technology, science and technology. And that is why I always hammer on that aspect of politics. And um, so my aim in politics is to make sure that the issues that are better on our survival, competing with the rest of the world, come to the fore. And if we do that, at some point, it will not really matter which political party is in power. The nation will move on. Chairman, so your inspiration is to drive the development of this country using science and technology. I'm sure Chairman would not permit me. How do you intend to do it, Professor? Um, first of all, Mr. Chairman, by talking about it and letting everybody know that without science and technology, we cannot make it. All nature is science. And everything we do hinges on science. And so first of all, we have to uh, understand the science and technology of things so that we can develop. And that has to start from the homes, from primary school, throughout up to the university level. All right. Um, are there any more questions on the CV? No, CV I have, but on our, after on our I challenge. On the CV? Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Prof. Lamy also used this opportunity to say a big congratulations to you. And uh, I'm happy to know today that your paternal grandparents, maternal grandparents come from Sefi Tatano. And uh, I'm sure you are aware, I I'm also come from Sefi. Uh, Bodhi. Natano to Bodhi is not that far. I know. Uh, so I'm happy you are before us. Monsieur Minia. Prof, what is it? I want to say. I want to say. I don't want to say. Okay. <laughs> 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 Between 2008 and 2009, Prof was the chairman of PURC. Uh, can you tell us your experience uh, at PURC and yeah, it's on the CV. It's from the CV. No. Please. Okay, chairman, you are in charge. Please, After please, him, you can. Lord, please. Obi, what's your problem? Around uh, that he uh, addressed the chair. Please yes. answer. Well, I, I spent a year there, and it was uh, a very good time for me. I got to know about the challenges facing the utility services um, and how things can be done very well. Uh, but unfortunately, when 
my party lost power, I was dismissed on radio. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't know, I'm not a lawyer, but I thought at the time that it wasn't right because a, a chairman of, of a commission cannot be just be dismissed on radio. But I didn't want to pick up any quarrel, so I just went home and uh, went back to Kolebu to operate on my ass. <laughs> All right. Any more on the CV, please? Uh, Chairman, given the weight of Professor Kobner Fimpon Barton and his respect as a distinguished Ghanaian citizen, who am I to attempt to correct his CV than to seek the Chairman's permission and his own permission so that I will take him to page one? The way you have shown the, to Agnes five children, to Agnes five children, I thought in Chairman's template you had number of children and then we would, 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 would be able to do that. If you have no objection, you just had to combine the marriage and the children. <laughs> Prof. Uh, yes, married to Agnes and her five children. Agnes is behind me, it's an, in the Marbroni. <laughs> and then Prof. Page 2, academic qualifications, uh, it may be important to know where, where, uh, after the 1975 through 1986, if we have your permission, we should know where for our records. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Actually, I brought my certificates as you requested. But the MBCHB um, was, in, was in the Ghana Medical School. Uh, the FACAS Shirugi is a, um, a surgeon, specialized general surgeon. That was in Hanover, Germany. And then the AS Thoras and Cardiovascular Shirugi is uh, specialized for thorax and cardiovascular surgery, surgery, also in Hanover, Germany. And then the third one is Ars Gefe Chirurgi, that is specialized vascular surgeon, also from Germany. And then the Dr. Med is also from Germany, where, you know, in, in Ghana, when you finish medical school, you are called a doctor, but you don't recognize that in Germany. Uh, you have to write a thesis. Uh, so I was, uh, although in Ghana I was Dr. from Pompwatin, when I got there, I was Mr. from Pompwatin, and I had to write my thesis before I could be addressed as Dr. Med, Doctor of Medicine in 1986. Thank you, Chairman. All the that leads me to page four, Chairman. And uh, you got everything right there. But F, head, Department of Surgery, University of Ghana Medical School, that period, that period, when? 2000. Chairman, which area is that? No, page two. Uh, page no, I'm on page four now. Yes. Page four. Everything oh, is right there. Just F. The period. Oh, the period was um, 2000 to 2000. Yeah, 2000, 2002. Uh, page five. Do I assume that you remain a member of all the professional affiliations listed there yes or it was from some point in time in your life to some other point no i'm still um, a member of all these associations and i brought the certificates also with me Uh, cardiology in the young page eight was it published in was a journal cardiology in the young the 207 publication and item 21 of page eight yes it was published in that that um journal it's um, a a year journal we can add so that we know that it was published in this, the e-journal. Thank you, Prof. I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Chairman, probably you can start with uh, maybe Honorable Obiamua, then I'll come back.
Obi is still on the CV? He's still on the CV, Chairman. It's a whole book, but we're trying to see what we can do with it. Congress, Prof. Um, just two questions from you, um, from me to you. Page three. Are you still the president of the Ghana Hearts Foundation? I am, Mr. Chairman. Since 1989. Since 1989. Okay. And the page 14, um, number 12, current activities. You've established the Providence Specialist Hospital in New Achimota and then Frimpon Bati Medical Center at Wase in the Chumama Beja District. Can you provide a date? When were these um, centers established? Um, actually, the Providence Hospital in Accra is a specialist hospital uh, primarily dealing with the heart. So it's going to be one of the best centers on our continent. The date? It will be, it will be completed in April. April. And then the Frimpon Bati Medical Center. The Frimpon Bati Medical Center has existed since 2001, but it's been upgraded also to um, accommodate the heart center. That will also be completed. That phase will be completed also in April. Okay, thank you. Uh, Chairman, with your indulgence and that of Prof, page 13, reconciled with page 5. We have a repetition of professional bodies' affiliations. Can we expunge the one in 13? I've just said it, uh, Mr. Chairman, you can. And I'm grateful for pointing it out. Chairman, Professor, in page five, you were taming a monster. Is that monster still there? Yes, um, it's become a bigger monster. Uh, you cannot feed and also not care. That is the sad thing with it. And if you rear a monster, uh, you find it difficult to tame and also difficult to care. And it, it haunts you all the time. Okay, so we'll start with the main meet. Um, hello, hello. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. And, um, Congratulations, Prof. Uh, as you know, that was my <clears throat> former ministry. And um, so I'll be coming from known angles to both of us. You rightly began by saying that <clears throat> science and technology has an important role to play in national development. And uh, the problem is that We've all acknowledged this, and we've said a lot about this. And we acknowledge that science and technology is very important. But when it comes to practical terms, this is where I saw and still continue to see major problems. What are we going to do? Or what are your plans to ensure that science and technology really comes to the fore in national economic planning. When we were there, uh, there were attempts to form a, a national body, an apex body, to oversee science and technology, and also to select a chief scientist, and then place scientists in all the ministries, just to give a boost to the role of science and technology. What, what are your views on how we can effectively, you know, promote science and technology as an economic driver of our nation. Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you, Doctor, for this question. Very pertinent. We will have to have long-term measures, medium-term and short-term. Long-term meaning that we have to start from a school with STEM, the study of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and let children know why certain things are done. For example, over the years, we've been telling children to wash their hands before eating, or wash, hand washing, but they may not understand why they should wash their hands. So if we could provide children, even in the primary schools, with a magnifying glass or a small microscope, they wash their hands, 
take a look at the fluid under the marine fine grass, and when they see bacteria swimming, then they will know that there's something there that can harm them. So that is where we have to start. Another area that I think should be done is, for example, just to alert people, um, let's say the, we want to talk about weedy side, the harmful effects of weedy side. The children may not understand, but we tell the children to go to even their school, an area that has been treated with woody side. They take soil samples, they go to another area that has no woody side. They take another soil sample, then they look at it, count the number of insects, worms, and so on. Then they'll see the difference. So from the very beginning, they'll be thinking scientifically. So when we say, don't do this, they'll know why we're not doing it. But coming to our present time, I think we need to create a critical mass of scientists because the science and technology infrastructure in Ghana is very, very weak. That is why my friend and brother, Apostle Yosafo, has difficulties. Now, over the years, he's got a lot of ideas. He wants to do things, but it's almost impossible for one person to, let's say, manufacture a car because car manufacturers have suppliers. Sometimes hundreds or thousands. A car manufacturer, let's say Mercedes or whatever, will not manufacture a tire, will not manufacture a windscreen, will not manufacture a wiper motor, will not manufacture the light. They are suppliers. And so if we don't have those suppliers, people who can make a boat for you or something for you, it's very difficult. That is why we think that we should get a critical mass of scientists, technologists, and engineers so when somebody has an idea, that idea can be transmitted to a lot of people and they can take part in that process. So that is, we are talking Prof, too much. It's noted, uh, Honorable uh, Hello, sorry for the interruption. So, Prof, what will you do to help your friend, Apostle Safo, to be able to deliver uh, to the yes. Ghanaian people? What will you do practically to assist and help him? Yes. Give me your vision. So we are saying, I'm saying that we need to create, uh, let's say, machine tool centers. Uh, CNC machine tool centers, for example. Computer in America. Rob, we, we don't know CNC here, so oh. help us. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, CNC is computer <laughs> numerical control. OK, thank you. So uh, let's say you, you have this. It's just like the, the late turning and, and so on, but this one is computer controlled. So you can use the computer to design, let's say, a boat or a knot. And that is CAD, CAD, Computer Aided Design. And you can use the computer to manufacture computer aided manufacturing. And so you can simulate the design on computer. And then when you get, then you get a code, when you design something, you generate a code. Then, when the code is given to somebody with a, a machine and a meta, we put the meta in the machine, give the code, and then it manufactures that thing for you. So that if we have a lot of uh, machine tooling centers across Ghana, Kokompe, uh, and Magazine, Tamale, a lot of places, and then we have a few engineers in Accra, they can design the equipment, spare parts that we need, generate a code, and send them to technicians who are operating these machines so that we will be able to create spare parts for things that we need, maybe for our water pumps, our generators, and so on. And when these spare parts are created, they are transported to a central point where they are manufactured. Well, now we have to continue. Okay. Thank you, Chair. The major problem with all these things, well said, you've said everything so nicely has to do with funding, money. You need money even to educate school children. You need money to teach them what to do, oh. the microscopes and all that. So where will we get the money for this? Funding for all these nice ideas that you we, told us. We have to find the money for it. Uh, I don't know where it's going to come from, but I believe the finance people will, will, will understand it because, you see, right now we spend just about 0.25% of our GDP on research and development. And we know that we have to push it up to at least 1%, and at best 
So if we budget for it, we will get dividend and then we will move on. So if we say we don't have money for research and development and technical things, then we we'll remain the way we are because really the difference between us and them is technology. The poverty gap is really a technology gap. So whatever that we have to do to bridge that gap, we have to do it. Thank you. My second question is still on the area of science. Um, CSIR is under your uh, ministry and uh, it has many challenges apart from lack of staff, funding and all that. There is a very practical problem about their land. They have acquired land several years ago for crops, exper experiments in uh, crops, animal husbandry and so on and so forth. Uh, today there's been a lot of encroachment on these lands. Uh, recently we heard that a Nigerian is selling some of the lands at Fafraha. What can you do to help so that we reserve or preserve all these lands for our research purposes? Thank you Mr. Chan for this question. I I've been told um, and we have to work hard to secure the land for CSIR, for Ghana Atomic Energy Commission, and all the agencies um, under the Ministry of Science, uh, Environment, Science and Technology. This is very disturbing, and we have to bring in all the stakeholders, the chiefs. You see, and sometimes it's because of how we treat CSIR. You know, when people say, oh, CSIR, what are they doing? They are doing nothing, and they are this. They are very hard-working people working under trying conditions. So when people hear that, oh, CSI is doing nothing, then landowners or speculators can go and challenge them for the land, because if you are doing nothing, then what was the land there for? So we have to appreciate what our scientists are doing, appreciate their difficulties, let them know that we appreciate them, they are working hard, and that we are prepared to help them solve their challenges. So, <clears throat> do we take it for aware that you're going to fight to get these lands back? You know, Mr. Chairman, you know I'm noted for building walls around <laughs> land. Um, and I don't think that would be an exception. Chairman, let me, will you stop the sale of those public lands and revert it back to those state institutions? When do you intend to do that? Mr. Chairman, as soon as you give me the nod and I take over the managing the ministry on behalf of the president, will take immediate steps because I have visited all the areas and I know the challenges. Honorable Uriamwa. Thank you. Honorable, um, my third question. question. No. <laughs> this is your fourth question. No, I haven't finished. Uh, Chairman, we may accommodate Hello since she's on our side, our principal person, based on her background coming from the ministry. So, with your indulgence, Dr. Hello. Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, my last question is about uh, the area of environment. Uh, recently, we've witnessed um, gas explosions. Uh, the latest one claimed lives and all that. But we also have guidelines, EPA has guidelines on how to ensure safety at our filling stations and also the gas stations. I remember when we were there, I had occasion to visit a few filling stations. And we are seeing today flouting the regulations 9 and 10 of filling, for, for filling stations and gas stations. My question is, how would you ensure that the guidelines are adhered to. Uh, people criticize us for leaving our offices, ministers leaving offices, and going out to inspect filling stations. That was our approach to really show that the issue was serious. What will you do uh, to ensure that the guidelines are followed very straightly so that we save lives of Ghanaians? Thank you. Thank you for the question, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as you well know, the EPA and other stakeholders, the, uh, 
the Petroleum Authority people, they're also involved in certifying these things. But sometimes it, it's about the Ghanaian way of doing things. You know, it's not only about the gas station in a residential area. After all, when you buy the gas, you put it in your home. And your kitchen is in your home. It's about all of us obeying simple rules and making sure that you are safe. So the way you will treat your gas cylinder, make sure that the tubes from the gas cylinder to your stove, they're all working, it's about the same principle. So we have to educate ourselves so that we keep not only the gas station safe, and our homes also safe, because a lot more people die in the homes than exploding gas stations. It's all about safety and our concept of safety. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Prof. Again, Prof. I believe you have a copy of our manifesto. If you can refer to page 97. The <coughs> paragraph two talks about contribution of science and technology to Ghana's GDP. Um, it says, in the case of Ghana, science and technology contributes less than a percentage, less than one percent to Ghana's GDP, compared to 2.5 percent in the rest of Africa, and that it is the vision of the MPP to achieve at least 1.5 percent over the next four years. Now, in the first place, don't you think um, this target is too modest? And then, how are we going to hit the, the modest target? It's modest, but it appears to be a little bit modest, and then we can build up to a higher level. So, Chairman, we will start with very simple things. Uh, let me say, let's say the late jam industry. Sometimes in Ghana, we confuse, we, we don't seem to appreciate the difference between uh, growth and development. Um, we talk to people and say, oh, we want the yam industry to grow. What do we mean by that? We want to, to produce more yam, and, and that is growth. And, and so growth is increase in size, but development is not only increase in size, but increase in complexity. So one may produce less yam, but then if you want to uh, use science and technology to grow the yam industry, you will have to peel the yam, slice it, and clean it, vacuum pack it, adding value to it, and then preparing, uh, turning the peelings into animal feed or something. In that case, you grow the yam industry, and that is the role of science in that. Good afternoon. 